So I've op opened here the, um, the template project that uh, you uh, cloned from my, uh, my template example on my GitHub. And, uh, and I, I can open it up. And I can see here's a server. Right? This is a Node.js server. And uh, just, um, uh, just, just to show you, let's, let's build this from scratch. Right, just, just to get an idea of how Node.js works. Uh, so we're using um, Express. No, nope, that's not it. Express.js. So Express.js is a Node.js uh, library that allows us to very easily create um, uh, servers. Right, very easily create servers. Uh, and uh, and we, can, we can use it here in, in uh, Node.js to, uh, to create, uh, just, just with a couple lines of code, you can create uh, fairly sophisticated servers. And, um, and j just, just to review, Node.js is just a desktop interpreter for running JavaScript on the, on the desktop. Right? So if you, you type here console log in hello world, right, this is the ubiquitous uh, hello world from uh, that we all start always from with any, any, any course. Oh, it's over. Let's close that. Uh, so from the terminal, I can, um, I can list where I am. Uh, and you see I have a, I have a server JS and I can run that and say node. Uh, so node is the interpreter and then I can just give it node to the server JS and it says hello world, right? Uh, so that, that's all node is, right? It's an interpreter for JavaScript. And, and you can type here any valid JavaScript with all the for loops and if statements and uh, 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 with the benefit that this is running on your desktop, right? So you have access, direct access to a file system, which you don't on a browser. You have access, direct access to a database, which you don't on a browser, right? You have unrestricted access to the network, which you don't on a browser, right? Uh, so, it's, so you can do all, all sorts of server-side things that you can't do on a browser. Uh, one of the things that we can do is install and create running servers. And, and Express uh, is uh, one of the more um, uh, popular uh, libraries that allow you to create uh, servers. Right? And so let's create a server. To create a server, uh, it's just we need two lines of code. Uh, and that creates a server. Um, require is the equivalent of import in other languages or include. Right, basically searches for a library and it just makes it available uh, as an instance uh, or as a function uh, depending on what's inside, what are, depending on what that library exports. Right? Uh, here it's exporting a function right? and that's, this function is being used here as a constructor. Right? It creates a brand new instance of an object that we can then use locally here uh, that has a particular API right? that we can call methods on it. Yes? Okay. Uh, one particular uh, method that we can uh, call on it uh, is to start listening at a particular port. Okay. Uh, so down further, uh, we can tell it to uh, listen at a particular port. Right. Uh, we can say, okay, well, server, start up and listen at port 3000. Yes? And that is, you know, in three lines of code, uh, the simplest uh, 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 server you can think of. So simple that it doesn't do anything. Right? Um, so if we run node server, um, oh, it's, I, I think I have a server already running at 3000. Uh, let me change it maybe. Okay, I don't have anybody listening at 4000. It complained because I have another server listening at, at 3000. Uh, so notice that it blocked, right? It didn't come back. See that? Uh, the other one printed out hello world and it stopped. Yes? Here, uh, the app listen, it gets into an infinite loop of listening for port, th uh, port 4000 for incoming HTTP requests, right? Uh, and if I try to hit that, that, uh, that, that uh, location, 4000, uh, it's going to complain and says, uh, you're trying to navigate or you're trying to ask for a, um, for a slash, right, for root. You're trying to ask for a resource which has, is not mapped to, to anything, right? I don't know how to respond back to you with the root, okay? You're not asking for anything in particular. Um, so so we, we need to go back and tell it how to handle any one of those requests, right? What, what this happened here, right? 
if we look at, uh, we, if we inspect here, uh, we can see what's going on here, right? We can um, uh, inspect and look at the console, and we can look at the network and see what's going on. So if we refresh uh, um, a, a net network request went out, uh, but no, there was no response from the server. The server had no way to respond for it, right? Um, uh, so we can start listening for particular uh, requests, right, at a particular path, right? So path and in, in, in HTTP, right, have the following, the following syntax, right? Uh, slashes, right, and uh, that typically would map to some physical path on the file system, right? That was the original intent, right, that you would take this path, you, you would map it to some public location on the file system, and then you would uh, you would traverse the file system until you until you found you know asdf.html right uh, and if I go there it says no I can't find it there's nothing mapped to that okay I can't find that uh, so so here we have to we have two 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 ways to do this one way is to uh, declare a a global uh, public directory where everything in there is going to be publicly available that's one way. Uh, or a more targeted uh, mechanism where I can say, hey, if you see the following get request, the following HTTP get, right, if you see a request such as this, right, from the root that says hello, then do the following, okay, and we can specifically handle, you know, specific requests individually, right, uh, so for instance, I can run the following query or the following function right so this this allows me to bind right a particular incoming URL pattern right to a particular action on the server right uh, so I might say uh, I want to just say console log hello hello from the server okay uh, and so if I restart the server Okay, and now if I go back uh, and I go to slash hello, right? Uh, notice that the server did print it out, right? See that it says hello from server. See that? But what happened to the client? The browser is still kind of hanging there. Notice that this is still spinning. See that? That's because uh, we we uh, this is built on the uh, uh, in the uh, on the architecture of client server, right? The the uh, the the typical Behavior is that the client asks for something or requests some resource. The server does its magic and then it responds back and serves that resource back to the client. Right? Notice that the client did generate the request, but the server never generated a response. Okay? So the client is just waiting. Right? There's no way for the client to ever know whether, whether the server will ever respond. Right? Um, uh, it's being optimistic and it's still waiting. Uh, eventual timeout, it'll get sick of it and just time out and says, okay, well, whatever. The server never responded. Okay. Uh, so let's stop the server. If I stop the server, notice that immediately the, the, uh, uh, it lo loses connection, right? There was an HTTP connection live to the server, but the server never responded, right? It was waiting for a response. So let's go back here and actually generate a response. Uh, so, so Express is the one who implements all this mechanism, right? All this uh, uh, client-server uh, mechanism, right? And it creates this API that allows us to play in this in this mechanism in this uh, model. Uh, so, one of the things that it does is that it it intercepts. Here, we're telling it, "Hey, intercept this particular uh, uh, URL, okay, and execute this function, right?" Uh, and that's what it'll do. Uh, uh, and what it'll do is that it will uh, encapsulate everything that comes from the client, uh, including the URL, including any parameters, any any uh, cookies, right? Any any uh, forms that they might have submitted, any data that comes, any timestamp, the IP address from the client, everything that comes from the browser, it will be parsed by Express, right? And it'll be provided to the function, right? As an object, as the first argument, as the first argument to this function, okay, um, and you can call this uh, this variable whatever you want, right? But a common name is req for request, 
Okay. Uh, the second argument is another object that allows you to programmatically play in this client-server lifecycle, right? To actually generate a response back to the client, right? And say, oh, you know, you asked for this, I will give you back something, right? And this is, um, and this is where I can uh, send something back to the to the client, and I say instead of console log, right? I can send it back as a response from the server. Okay, instead of just printing it out to the console, I can send it back to the client so that the client is not just there stuck forever. Right. So if I if I restart the server, right, I go back and I refresh this. I notice that it comes back. The response comes back from the uh, server. Hello. Hello. Why is this so filtered? I don't want to filter. Um, where is it? Where, where, where? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it says, where's my request? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so this is the request that went out. Notice that all this information gets encapsulated right inside of the request right, and sent over to the client, uh, to the server. The server uh, it packages it, uh, or actually not um, express packages it and provides a request, and then it generates a response back to the clients. Right, so you can see, you can look at the response. Here's a preview. This is the raw text that comes back from the from the uh, uh, from the server. Right, um, any any uh, any headers, any cookies come back as well. Okay, everybody okay? Right, uh, and if I change this. Right, and I and I um, restart, and I refresh. Notice that it says no, I can't get hello. I don't have that anymore. It's not mapped to that anymore. Right. Um, all right. Uh, so we're going to be using this quite a lot. This get and then a particular URL. Right. Uh, because uh, we don't just want to respond with with hello. We want to and not just respond with text. We want to respond with something a little more interesting, right? Such as data, right? Like message, you know, hello, Jello. No, <laughs> hello from server. Um, so if I refresh, if I restart, and I refresh, notice that it comes back with a fully formatted JSON object. See that? The the uh, the ser notice that it added quote double quotes. I didn't have double quotes, right? I didn't have double quotes. But send is smart enough, right, to look at what's what's sending, right, and to format it in the correct data type, right. Uh, so it added the extra double quotes, right, double quotes everywhere. So it's a nicely formatted uh, JSON 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 object. So the first half of this course uh, is going to, uh, sorry, the second half of this course <laughs> is going to be uh, generating tons of this API JSON objects going back to the to the to the uh, to the client, okay, uh, uh, where the client is going to be asking for this data and then dynamically rendering this on the on the client. Yes. Um, and lastly, before we uh, we go, I just want to just cover this real quick. Um, the what we're going to be doing for most of the the first half of the course for the first three weeks, I guess, uh, we're going to be using. Uh, uh, handling static content. Right? We're going to be hosting just mostly just static content, just HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Okay, static for the server, right? From the server's point of view, this is static content. The server is not manipulating in any way, right? It is the client who's manipulating all this content. Uh, so instead of this get over here, right? We're going to blanket say that everything under the public directory. Is static content, right? So, uh, so everything in this uh, uh, that maps to slash, right? Everything that maps to uh, slash here, this slash is going to be interpreted as everything that is under the public directory. So this slash here under the public directory is that slash over here. Okay. So everything that I put inside of the public directory. Starting from my local directory, meaning web dev under the public directory. See that? 
right, is going to be uh, static. That means that verbatim parse the path in the URL and try to map it to a physical file or directory, right, under the public directory. Otherwise, we would have to create tons of these things, right? We would have to create a route. We call these routes. These, these URLs, we refer to routes, right? We would have to create a route for every single file. That would be very inconvenient, right? That if we want to serve every single file, we'd have to create a route independently. Right? That's very inconvenient. This one abstracts all that mechanism. So if we do that, right, and we restart the server, okay, uh, and I now refresh, uh, not with a hello, but that's a route, right? That's the that's the that's the um, that's the uh, uh, slash. Actually, it's slash index.html, right? That is the file I'm looking for. It's this one right here under the public directory. See that? So it's slash index. It's public index. Everybody okay? So this index file is exactly what we're looking right here. So this web dev course page is this is this content right here. Web dev content page. Everybody okay? So if I change this, right, and I refresh, the content is uh, updated uh, immediately. Right? Notice that if I make changes to anything that is static, right, the changes are made immediately. If I make changes to server side code, I need to restart the server. Okay? Right, so static uh, is verbatim, interpreted and passed over. Uh, not interpreted, sorry. Not interpreted and passed uh, as is, whereas this uh, needs to be re restarted. Um, uh, so if you make any content here, so if, put, if you put any hellos here, hello, uh, yes. Uh, and you put a you know h1 hello world right and then I ask for hello world hello it's that brand new file I just created right notice that I didn't need to restart the server everything under the static is just verbatim passed over okay uh, one last thing uh, this node.js sort of notice that I'm control C and then I restart see that Okay, don't do that. Uh, create here a, a, a configuration, right? Create a brand new configuration. Say that you want a new uh, no, uh, Node.js. Okay, uh, so this will create a brand new Node.js instance, right? It'll run Node against a file that you tell it. Which file? Uh, you'll tell it what file. In this case, is server.js, right? I uh, call it whatever you want. You can call it server and say OK. And now you can run it from here. Right? If you come to see me in uh, office hours, I don't want to see you, you're doing control C and restarting the server. Right? I want you to I want to see uh, a, a configuration, yes? This allows you to step through your code, allows you to step through your server. You put a breakpoint, okay, and if an incoming request comes from the client. You can step through your code on the server, and you can start it in debug mode, right? Uh, you can stop it and then start it in debug mode, and you can step through your code. So you can step through your code on the client. You can step through the code on your server, right? So you can debug all you want, right? Don't use console log all the places, right? Step through your code, all right? So if I, if I run it, uh, it starts, and now it's running, right? And I can just refresh, okay? All right, I think I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I'm losing my voice. Um, any questions? Uh, if you have questions, please, uh, Piazza. Uh, and uh, chances are that if you have a question, uh, there are all the students with exactly the same question. Um, and, uh, so start there. All right? All right, thank you.